Hello everyone. This video would focus on addition and subtraction of radicals and this is the first part. Before we jump into these examples right here, please feel free to check out the description box below for the link of the other series of topics related to radical expressions. Now let's look at the parts and definition of radical expressions. <laughs> Please remember that these are the parts of every radical expression. The first part is the radical symbol. The reason why this is called radical expression is because it is an expression that contains the radical symbol. Our A here is called a coefficient. A coefficient is a number multiplied to the radical expression. And the letter N here is called the index. This tells you which root you're looking for. Please remember that if the value of the index is not written in there, it means that that invisible number is 2. We also have a letter C, and this letter C is named as the radicand. A radicand is the value that you are taking the root of. So this expression that we have here is read as A times the nth root of C. So this is read as square root of 36. So if we wanted to know what is the value of square root of 36, we can go ahead and equal this whole expression to x. So this is read as square root of 36 equals x. Now we are going to rewrite this into its equivalent exponential form. This expression that, or this equation that we have here means that x squared is equal to 36. What is x? So if you notice, our x here becomes the base of the exponential form, while our index of 2, which is invisible, becomes the exponent in the exponential form, and our radicand, which is 36, will become the answer to the exponential expression. What we're trying to do right now is we're supposed to determine a value, the value of x such that when we multiply this x by itself twice, it will give us 36. Meaning if we have blank times blank equals 36, and it should be the same number. So then these two numbers would be 6 times 6. So 6 times 6 is 36. And so we can go ahead and rewrite this as 6 squared equals 36. And so this tells us that our x is 6. So then this square root of 36 then will equal to 6. So that's how we evaluate radical expression. So these are the parts and definition of radical expressions. <laughs> Okay, now before going further, let's have the definition and examples of like and unlike radicals because we're going to be using that in adding and subtracting radicals. We remember that if we say like radicals, these are radicals that have the same indices and the same radicand. Well, on the other hand, if we say unlike radicals, these are radicals that differ in either the radicand or the index. So let's take this general radical expressions. So these two radical expressions that we have here are like radicals. So the only two parts of the radicals that we look at to determine if it's like or unlike radicals are again the two indices or the indices and the radicands. So in this case right here, both indices are the same and both radicands are the same. It doesn't matter if the coefficients are not the same as long as the indices and the radicands are the same. Then we go ahead and say that the, the radicals are like radicals. Now let's have the first example. So we are given 4 times cube root of 5 and negative 7 times cube root of 5. Again, the only parts that we need to check are the indices and the radicand. So in this case right here, both indices are 3, so we're good. And both radicands are 5, so we're good. We can go ahead and say that these two expressions are like radicals. Now let's take the next example. So looking at this example, we have a 3 
and we have an invisible two um, as the indices. So we can say that the two indices three and two are not the same so that we can go ahead and say that this is unlike radicals. We also have five and seven as radicands and they're not the same. So it further um, verifies that these two are unlike radicals. Now let's move on to the next one. Now, both of them are 7, but the other one is the whole number. Well, the other one has a square root on it. So then we can go ahead and say that these two are unlike radicals. So that is how we determine whether the two radical expressions are like radicals or unlike radicals. Okay, going back to the problem right here, we are supposed to add these two radical expressions. Now, again, we are going to check their indices and you can see that the first index is three and the other index is two and their radicands, the first one is four and the second one is five. This tells us that they don't have the same indices and they don't have the same radicand and so they are unlike radicals and so we go ahead and keep this as our final answer. So the answer to this when we add them would just be the cube root of 4 plus 7 square root of 5. So this is already the answer. Now let's move on to the next example. In this next example, we can see that their indices are the same. Both of them are 5 and both of their radicands are the same, which is 3. So we can go ahead and say that this is an example of like radicals. So we go ahead and add their coefficients and copy the radical expression. So that would be negative 4 plus 10 is a positive 6. And then just copy the fifth root of 3. So this is the sum of these two radical expressions. Now let's move on to the next example. In this next example, we can say that both of their indices are the same, which is 7, and both radicands are the same, which is 4. So that we can go ahead and say that this is an example of like radicals. So we can go ahead and add their coefficients or subtract their coefficients because that's a minus right there. So 5 minus 8 is negative 3. And so we copy their radical expression. So that would be a uh, seventh root of four. So this is the difference between these two radical expressions. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. So there are three indices here, three, three, and two. As you can see, their indices are not the same. Only the first two have the same indices. And so although their radicands are the same, five, five, and five, but again, their indices are not. So we can go ahead and say that only these first two um, expressions here are actually like radicals so that we can go ahead and add these two together so negative nine plus there's an invisible one right there so remember there's an invisible one so negative nine plus one is negative eight and we copy their common um, radical expression which is the cube root of five and then we just write it out minus square root of five we cannot simplify this further because again, the three and the two as the indices right here are not the same. So this is the final answer right there. Did you get the same answer as this? Good, perfect. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. As you can see, 
all of the indices that we have here, the three indices are five, five, and five, so they're all the same. And all the radicands are the same, three, three, and three. Therefore, we can say that these three here are actually like radicals, so that we can go ahead and add their coefficient. So that would be four minus seven is negative three, negative three plus two is negative one. So I can go ahead and write negative one, and then we copy the common um, radical expression that is five or the fifth root of three. Or we can go ahead and rewrite this as negative fifth root of three. Any of these would be correct, because remember, if it's one, it becomes invisible. So I did not write the one here at the bottom. Did you get the same answers as this? Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.